Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kevin with Direct Equipment. The indoor vertical farming rise and fall has been pretty interesting to watch. Uh, starting in 2021 and then in 2022, there were many, many articles and features about how the indoor farming was going to revolutionize agriculture, that we are going to be growing food closer to or inside urban centers, closer to where the food is consumed. And many of these ideas sound great on paper. Um, the idea that you would use much less water, so you wouldn't have water lost to evaporation or broken pipes. You wouldn't need pesticides because everything is indoors. And so you wouldn't have the insecticide use. And that means you wouldn't have the chemical contamination of the soil due to insecticide use. That was compelling. The seasons don't matter. If you're indoors and you can regulate the sunlight, regulate the water, then you could grow any crop you like all year round. You could grow plants, grow the plants 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we are going to revolutionize agriculture. The shipping costs would drop almost to zero because you would be uh, the transportation costs would all be local. I live in China where food security is a national security issue. They, they're already the largest importer of food in the world, and they've been working on this problem for a lot longer than Silicon Valley has. We're also surrounded here by hundreds of thousands of empty buildings, old and new. Uh, in downtown centers and in the suburbs and in the rural areas, there's a lot of empty buildings that they can be turned into urban farms if they could figure out how to make the technology work. What's surprising is how easily debunked some of these talking points are. Uh, water evaporation is a serious issue, especially if you're in West Texas or in California, where arguably maybe you shouldn't be growing certain crops. It's not an issue where you get a lot of heavy rain. Um, the, it's also not a new industry. We grow a lot of things in greenhouses now. So when they're talking about an revolutionizing agriculture by growing indoors, there's hundreds of thousands of profitable greenhouses around the world uh, that already are in this business, right? The shipping cost situation too. Um, the fact is that bananas bro grown in Ecuador and shipped across an ocean and then on a truck to the grocery store costs less than apples grown four miles, five miles down the street. Shipping doesn't cost anything. The farmer's market that you're supporting in your local town has higher prices than the Costco's and the Walmarts. If we're honest, we know this. For example, uh, over half the mushrooms in the United States are grown in a tiny area in Pennsylvania. They just ship it out across the country. So the shipping is not an issue at all. I, I don't know why we think we're saving money on the shipping when it's already basically free. But one. A lot of the observers were watching the Silicon Valley money go into the space. We were really curious how they solved the sunlight problem, the problem of replicating sunlight. And we thought they had some secret that had been undiscovered by everybody else. In order to have a plant grow, it needs a lot of sun. And if you're growing that in artificial light, that gets expensive. There was a survey done that said that if you were using only renewable power in New York City and you had a large building full of lettuce, then you would need more solar panels than the island of Manhattan could give you. That's how much area you would need. Similar studies, it says that lettuce grown in downtown Chicago or New York actually cost much more the lettuce grown in California, shipped halfway across the country. So the problem is you cannot replicate the cost of sunlight. And when we were reading these articles, we were curious 
how they were going to solve that problem. And when they didn't, it was surprising again that they didn't solve it in the beta version where they had a few million dollars to play with the problem rather than investing a billion dollars. Another problem when you looked at the financial statements of these companies, the payrolls expense was enormous. They were obviously just hiring their own friends. In theory, it sounds like you're replacing a lot of farm labor, but if you're replacing labor with higher cost software engineers and robotics engineers, your payroll costs spike a lot. You're also paying people to live in the city instead of the rural areas where the cost of living is much lower. Farmers around the world get paid in sweat equity. It's their farm. They're working long, long days in lousy weather much of the year, but it's because they can share in the profits that their farms are bringing in. The urban farms aren't going to be that way, and they were never going to be that way. We do have a lot of problems in agriculture. We have to somewhere, somehow, find a way to grow in the next 25 years an equivalent amount of food that has ever been grown in the history of mankind. Going back 10,000 years or wherever it's been, where civilization first began, all the food grown for human consumption from that time to now, we have to do it again in the next 25 years. Nobody has a real good idea how that's gonna happen. Even if we have the incremental improvements that we've seen in the last generation of farming, we're not gonna make it. Or if we do, it's gonna be real close. And the fact that Russia and Ukraine, which are two huge food producing countries are at war with each other right now, that doesn't help at all. So we do have critical issues facing agriculture. There are a lot of good ideas coming in farming, precision agriculture. Uh, there is a place for robotics and agriculture. And almost all these good ideas, as usual, are going to be coming from farmers and not from Silicon Valley. We do give them credit for trying. That some of these things were worth a try, and I guess in the big scheme of things, a few billion dollars of private capital, thankfully, invested and lost to demonstrate things that we kind of already knew is still a step forward. It's still progress. But we need to figure out solutions to these problems quickly, figure out ways to get more technology at a lower cost to the farmers who are going to grow the food we need. Thanks for watching. Be good.